First of all, thanks, thanks to everybody for uh, adjusting your schedule and joining us today. Obviously, with the Friday game, everything kind of gets moved up. And like us, uh, we had to adjust our schedule and, and how we prepare for this thing on a Friday night. And so we appreciate you guys uh, adjusting your schedule to be a part of it. You know, we got back late uh, Sunday morning, uh, however you want to call it, late Saturday night, early Sunday morning at around 3.34 a.m. And, you know, having to play on a uh, Friday night, basically Sunday became a practice day for us, which typically is off, an uh, off day for our players. And so, you know, we pushed everything back into the afternoon and we had to obviously get closure uh, with the Northwestern game and uh, get that corrected and put to bed and then start the install with our uh, Minnesota prep. And so yesterday was a busy day for us. Uh, obviously, uh, Saturday uh, was not anything that we expected. Um, we can clearly play better, and we will. Um, there's no doubt in my mind. You know, it's easy to maybe want to make a tough or make a snap adjustment in one game. I think the biggest disappointment uh, for us is that we didn't play up to our standard that, that we had and how we practiced. And to me, uh, that's the disappointing piece, you know. But there were some things that I thought uh, were concerns for us coming out of that game. One, the turnovers, obviously throwing, you know, three picks or two picks, uh, three picks, a fumble, uh, the penalties. Those were all the things that are a concern for me on defense, our inability to get off the field on third down, as well as just not being really sound in our gap control. Those are things that uh, – concerning but there are also things that are very very correctable um the things i was excited about when i talked about that you know the tape sometimes that always show uh the big picture of everything you know i thought our pass protection which has been an achilles heel for us around here uh was much improved um we had a lot of young players make some solid contributions when you look at the running backs and jacobs and, and penny boone uh tarheeb still you know, started the game at corner for us, and we thought he played at a really high level. Uh, you know, we played a bunch, a bunch of players that, you know, to me, 10 true freshmen played, and I want to say uh, 20 players saw their first college action. And, you know, we played like that. And for me, it's up to us as a coaching staff, and you'll never hear me um, use the excuse of young because – uh, if you're old enough, if you're old enough, you're good enough. Or if you're good enough, you're old enough. And we got some good players that we have to get playing to the standard in which we want to play. Um, we're going to continue to rely on a bunch of players and develop them. Um, we'll shift our attention to Minnesota even more, obviously, today. Uh, even though it's a Monday for us, it's a Tuesday mindset with how we practice and prepare. Um, and, and we're excited to be home and playing in the shell. Uh, you know, we won't have, obviously, the crowd that, that, that we would like to have, but just being in our home confinement and teaching our players the importance of uh, playing to our standard at home and, and, and utilizing our ability to take advantage of being at home is going to be really important for us to take the next step. You know, the goal for us as a team is to always try to stay uh, neutral in how we approach things, meaning you can't let the last play affect the next play. We've got to play each play as an individual play and then move to the next one and then always reset at neutral. Um, I don't think how we played on Saturday uh, is, predictive on, is predictive to who we will be as a team. And what we do next against Minnesota has to change that. So with, this, with that, I'll open it up to any questions you guys may have. I would refer Jack Litch Law Group to anyone that I know because of their professional touch and they get the job done. They get it done timely and they do it right. As you just saw, our clients have trusted us. We need to reward that trust and we have with great results and great service. So call the big dogs right now, don't wait. Find us online at bigdogssmallfirm.com. Thanks, Coach. For our first one, we'll go to Alex Stacy. Hi, Coach. Thanks for uh, taking the time to do this. No problem. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about the defense because I know um, that, was, that was kind of a big issue on Saturday, and I think especially cons considering Northwestern came out with a lot of tempo. Um, so, And now moving this week into Minnesota, they like to slow things down a lot. So how are you going to sort of adjust your – defensive strategies um, because of the two, like, extreme contrast uh, from one week to the next? 
Yeah, you know, the, the good thing is obviously with Northwestern, it was the first time facing uh, that defensive coordinator or that offensive coordinator, a uh, new guy coming in and Mike Bajakin. And so a lot of the adjustments were things we had to make on the fly because we really didn't have a, a good understanding. Now, with Minnesota, they have a new offensive coordinator, Mike Sanford Jr., but we at least have a game on film to be able to understand and see who and what they plan to do and what they want to attack. Now, we also understand as coaches what you put on tape, you'll see again. And so uh, anytime you show that you can't hit the curveball, you're going to see the curveball until you show that you can do it. And so we expect uh, Minnesota to, to play their style of football, but we also have to always be prepared and be able to make the adjustments to handle and manage tempo offenses, which – you know, we do it against our defense. Uh, when we scrimmage, we have the ability to play with tempo. And so I would expect that, you know, from game one to game two, we'll make some improvement as well as uh, take the adjustments a little quicker than what maybe we did on Saturday. We'll go to Emily next. Hi. Um, with with the quarterback position, obviously it's the one that gets uh, too much credit and blame. Um, but when you look at that person as kind of being the leader – of your offense, what what are you looking for in a response from from a quarterback when he comes in on on Sunday, Monday after after maybe struggling? And what have you seen from Talia in that regard? I think the big thing is with anybody in our program is personal accountability. We all uh, have the responsibility of personally being accountable for what we put on tape and how we coach players and coaches included. Um, there's no doubt in my mind that Leah took personal accountability for. Uh, you know, how he played on Saturday, uh, you know, it's the guy's first career start uh, at, at the college level um, under a tremendous amount of uh, pressure because of being and named the starter and having to play at a high level, which he's very capable of playing um, better. And there's no doubt in my mind because he's shown and done it in practice. You know, I think what we found, uh, what Leah found himself in, in the game like Saturday was pressing to make a play, a big play, instead of, if you look at the first drive of the game, taking what the defense gave him, operating the system uh, in a manner with confidence. And, you know, he got behind, obviously, threw the ball into some double coverages, made some terrible decision, but not something that he has shown um, to be uh, something that he does consistently. Because, uh, again, like I said, he had a great week of work uh, up to up into the game and you know we expect him to bounce back but what I expect to see is one take personal accountability to make the corrections based off of what we put on tape and what we teach as a coaching staff and and those things he's already started he's the first guy in he was here yesterday watching film uh, you know he and I talk I meet with the quarterbacks every every Sunday after a game to to again make sure all of the communication between myself and them clear cut, uh, concise with where I am and my thoughts of, because as the quarterback and head coach, we're hip to hip and had a great meeting with Leah. Also had a chance to meet with Lance as well. And, you know, we're moving forward in our preparation for Minnesota. And based on what you've said, my understanding is that you're still fully committed to Leah being 100, the starter. 100%. Leah's our quarterback. Uh, Lance is the backup. As I've said before, we have the ability because of some of the things Lance was able to show even Saturday that he, he brings some things to the table that will give us some competitive advantages. We'll always try to use playmakers in our system, but Lee is our starting quarterback. Uh, and I expect that he will play better and continue to improve. We'll go to Scott Abraham. Hey coach Scott Abraham, ABC seven. Um, I guess, Twofold, what was your biggest disappointment on Saturday? Obviously, there, there, there's a lot of different factors, but uh, number one, what was your biggest disappointment? And number two, what gives you hope and belief that this team will bounce back and, and be ready for Minnesota on Friday? I think I said it in my opening statement, Scott. My biggest disappointment is that we didn't play up to the standard in which we practiced and, and uh, our expectation, not necessarily anybody else's, but ours. And you know, we've uh, had pretty good work up into that game. And the fact that we didn't play to the standard in which I've seen us practice and, and, and do in scrimmages and, and different situations I put the team in, that's probably the most disappointing. You know, losing sucks. And it sucks because of all the time that you invest in it. And we, we invested a lot of time 
up into that first game. And there were so many things that we had to sacrifice and do to get there. And for us to go lay an egg and, and not play up to our standard, that's probably the most disappointing. But as I also said, uh, we clearly can play better and we will play better. And again, the only thing that will change that is what we do this week, uh, Friday night against Minnesota. And my expectation is that we will play better. Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. Call Viner Four Gates for all of your IT needs. In the D.C. Baltimore area, you could reach us at 301 251 2900 or on the web at www.vinerforgates.com. Go to Ed Lee next. Mike, to follow up on your answer to Emily, what time did uh, Leah come in yesterday? Uh, well, we had check-in at noon for our COVID testing, and I think he was over here probably an hour before COVID testing. You know, as a coaching staff, we got back at 4. Um, some of us slept here at the office just to kind of get a jump start of putting Minnesota behind us and, and uh, putting Northwestern behind us and getting started on Minnesota because of having to practice. Um, but I think he got over here around, right around 11 o'clock. Uh, after getting back at four and you know, started his preparation, his recovery, checked in, did his COVID testing, and then got right into uh, watching the Northwestern game, and, and we transitioned into our Minnesota prep. How unusual is it to have a first-time starter show up as early like that, and what does that tell you about him? I mean, to me, it's the, the expectation I have for quarterbacks. I mean, you know, we use the term around here that it's uh, – um, profession and not a job you know professions are something you do 24 7 you're always a quarterback a job is something you do from nine to five and lee is one of those guys that treats playing quarterback as a profession and you know I've, you know he's one of those guys he takes copious notes he's a studier he's he meets with me he meets with coach uh coach montgomery um he's a gym rat he's always in the office and that's the expectation that you you expect to have from your quarterback so um, it's what I'm used to, and, and he's right along with some of the other great ones that I've had a chance to be around and how he approaches the game, so not surprising. Mike, uh, the, the game on Saturday, there were no sacks, no turnovers um, on, for the defensive side. Do you feel like you may need to blitz more to create that sort of pressure that leads to sacks and takeaways? Yeah, you know, it's a double-edged sword. I'm going to always tell you, you know, Ed, I am an aggressive guy by nature. I don't like to die a slow death. I'd rather be aggressive, uh, attack more than uh, conservative. Um, I'd like to have a good mixture of those things. I mean, obviously, to play good defense, uh, you have to be smart and pick and choose your spots. Uh, our expectation, you know, prior to losing Chami, which we lost very early in the game, uh, getting him back, he was probably one of our best pass rushers, uh, you know, they, what they did on offense, they got the ball out of their hands quickly, so we did not disrupt the quarterback, which I thought was a, something we had to do, knowing the type of uh, quarterback that Ramsey was. He's a guy that you have to get off his spot but contain, rush him, because he has the ability to make plays with his feet and extend things. So was disappointed that, you know, we weren't able to disrupt the quarterback and then obviously uh, not getting turnovers. I mean, that's, if you want to win a game, you got to limit big plays, which on offense, I think we had only four and we gave up 11. And then, you know, obviously the turnover battle, which, you know, we had three interceptions and a fumble. Um, so you don't win many games when you do that. You know, one on special teams and obviously the, the turnovers on the offensive side of the ball. Last question. Um, Northwestern, I think, rushed for more than 300 yards. How concerned are you about Muhammad Ibrahim from uh, Minnesota? Yeah, Muhammad is a really good player who last year uh, did a great job. You know, Minnesota is another one of those teams that uh, you know what and what they're going to do in terms of they don't try to hide who they are. They're going to run the zone play both inside and outside. They're massive up front. Uh, we've got to do a great job. If you want to stop zone runs, it's, you have to create penetration. Um, obviously, you know, we gave up a bunch of big plays in the run game. And after watching the tape, it goes back to, and I know, you know, it sounds like cliche-ish with coaches that are being gap sound, but it's really true. If you want to stop the run, you either got to add an extra guy to the box or you've got to do a good job of making sure that the A gap, the B gap, and the C gap are controlled by players 
with your color jersey on. And, uh, too many times we played out of gaps and we allowed Northwestern to, to have their way and they made some big plays in the run game. My expectations is we'll get that thing cleaned up this week. Uh, we'll play our gaps with discipline, uh, but also do a better job of attacking and adding numbers into the box because they want to run the football and they're going to take shots. That's who Minnesota is. And uh, we've got to make them play, as we like to say, play left-handed, meaning do things that they don't like to do, which is when you get them behind the sticks and make them have to drop back and throw the ball, you know, that's what our game plan has to be focused on trying to get them to do. Thank you. Yep. Meyer Consulting Engineers. In the past five years, our organization has completed over 1,300 projects in the U.S. and abroad, including many structures at the University of Maryland. For structural engineering and materials testing and inspection, call Meyer Consulting Engineers. Go to Lila next. Hey, Lox, how are you? Hey, Lila, what's up? Um, I know that Ace was, has always been that guy who's had um, kind of just brought a lot of energy and more of, um, I guess, like a lighthearted personality to the team. Um, how have you seen him kind of step up and be a leader for that linebacker group uh, this year, especially, you know, losing a guy like Keandre? Yeah, you know, with just one game into it, you know, I've been really impressed with Ace. Ace has been one of these guys that has played a lot of football around here for us and obviously – uh, being challenged with competition at the position, which I think continues to hopefully make us a better team because we have created this competition. And he's one that has uh, accepted and taken on the challenge of having competition. You know, the thing I saw out of him Saturday, and as I talk about, you know, you know, sometimes you look at the side of you mirror and it says objects are closer than they appear. And, you know, as bad as Saturday was for us, there's no doubt in my mind that things are a little bit better than what they may appear. And it's because of the type of leadership I saw out of Ace on Saturday and uh, trying to keep his teammates up through a tough game. And we had visual evidence of the culture change that we're trying to create here. Now, it wasn't on the football field, obviously, because you know how we played and how we executed was not at a high level. But there has been some cultural shift into the type of leadership that we're seeing out of this team, and it's coming from everywhere. Whereas I can't say that that was the case last year, but I do know Ace has played a major role in it with how he's responded and how he has had an impact on others with the leadership that he continues to show. And in terms of more off the field stuff, just how did you see him um, kind of help the younger guys uh, react to that loss? Yeah, again, you know, yesterday, and, and one of the best things about probably playing Minnesota on Friday is that normally it's a 48 hour window that you've got to deal with it. Well, for us, it was a 12 hour window. We get back at four. I met with the staff at noon. We got through the Northwestern tape together by three o'clock. We had a team meeting at three 30. We go through our uh, grades and our awards and things from the, the Northwestern game. And we put that to bed by, you know, five o'clock and then we go into another meeting where we introduce our Minnesota scouting report and then we go practice. So not a lot of time to necessarily linger or think or, you know, put too much onus in to what, what happened on Saturday. Obviously the goal is to get the things corrected from Saturday. And we were able to do that yesterday while at the same time flip the page. So uh, not a lot of time was spent necessarily uh, hanging on to what took place because our goal is to get to neutral again. That game is over. We move to neutral. We reset, and then we get ready for Minnesota. In terms of like on the on the sideline, or just kind of immediately after a loss, did you see him kind of um, you know step up in any regard? Like I know he's kind of always been that guy that brings the energy is a bit um, more goofy or funny, and kind of brings his teammates up. Yeah, Ace was really vocal on Saturday. You know, on the sideline in the locker room at halftime. Uh, throughout the fourth quarter, encouraging, coaching, teaching the younger guys that maybe were out there at the end of the game. Uh, and, and to me, that's what I expect to see. And that's when I talk about a cultural shift of, of how, how we want to be as a team. I think Ace exuded that in, in how he approached it. But there's no doubt he was one of the guys that when I talk about that there is a, a light at the end of the tunnel, it's seen the shift from a team that – 
play in games like this last year where maybe the negativity creeps in and maybe guys aren't as supportive of each other and maybe guys are more selfish, uh, worrying about their individual stats and where they are. But I saw a lot of players, including Ace and some older players, Jalen Duncan was another one of those guys, that hadn't shown some leadership like that before, but be very vocal and outward, outwardly vocal with their leadership. And, you know, we got guys that care, so we can win with that. Thank you. Yep. Go to Dave Preston next. Good afternoon, Coach. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. Uh, Minnesota returns uh, nine starters in, on offense, including uh, quarterback Tanner Morgan, a uh, guy threw 30 touchdown passes last year. What do you see that makes him the special guy that he is? And maybe how does he compare to uh, trying to contain Pat Dr- uh, uh, Ramsey that you did this uh, past Saturday? Peyton. Peyton, Peyton, my bad. Patrick no, Ramsey's no. an older guy. Yeah. No, I mean, I think, you know, as Tanner Morgan goes, that offense goes at Minnesota. You know, obviously they put a big onus and a big uh, uh, attention on being able to run the ball. They're massive up front. You know, they've got – three returning starters on the O-line, and then you got a tight end, uh, inline tight end in, in number 42 that's played a lot of football for those guys. And they want to run the ball, and the way they are able to hit and build on these explosive plays with Tanner is because of his accuracy um, and the way they run the ball to commit extra guys to stop the run. You open yourself up for the play-action shots off of it, and they've got two receivers and in, in, in Bateman, obviously, and, and Ottman Bale, who's the speed guy, and Bateman is one of those big play guys. that They'll max protect and throw two-man routes in those two guys, usually because of the commitments you have to make to stop the run. Those guys have made big plays, and then you add the RPO element to the run game, and these are guys that in space do a great job. You know, with the running backs, like I said, uh, Mo Ibrahim and Trayson Potts and those guys – uh, they play really complimentary, and, and Tanner really has a good understanding of the system. Even though they've got a new coordinator and Mike Sanford Jr., there's still elements, and you still see a lot of who they are uh, from P.J. Fleck, who's obviously an offensive guy, that they are who they were, and they like to run the ball. It starts with getting the run game going and then the play-action shots and the RPOs off the run game, and Tanner is one of the best in, the, in our conference at doing it. And, Coach, you touched on it a little bit uh, earlier. uh, Being at home this Saturday, you guys haven't played a game at home in, I think, over 11 months. Even though the fans will not be in the stands, how huge is it for you guys to be at home this Friday? Yeah, for us, I I just think we've got to learn how to win here at the Shell, and we've got to take advantage of uh, being in a comfortable environment, an environment that we're really uh, familiar with, and play at a, a high level. When we come inside the shell, we have to play at a high level. Um, and so whether there's fans or not fans, there's something to be said about owning the home field advantage and, and making sure that every time you play here in the shell that you bring your A game. And to me, that's something that obviously we have to do a better job of as a, a program. Um, my job as a coach is to get us ready to play at a high level. I, there's no doubt, like I said, we, we – clearly can play better and I expect that we will. Thanks again. No problem. We have time for two more. We'll go to Jeff Ehrman. Hey Mike, any update on Chami? Uh, yeah, Jeff, uh, you know, we had an MRI this morning, um, lower extremity deal. Uh, there was no damage to any of the ligaments. Um, He's right now on a day-to-day basis, and it's you know it's a high-level uh, high-level uh, sprain. So you know we're kind of day-to-day with it. Just kind of got that information, so uh, we'll know more about how he feels here in the next day or two. For our last one, we'll go to Sean Stepner. Hey, coach. Good to see you. Um, Sean, what's up? Nothing much. So. Just kind of piggybacking off of Dave's question um, about playing at home, you've seen your fair share of, of football games at Maryland Stadium. Just how bizarre and kind of weird will it be to be there with zero fans? Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously going through it um, last week at Northwestern on the road, kind of a different environment. But one of the things that 
as a competitor, as we like to say, when the scoreboard comes on, uh, it's about competing and, and competing for the guy next to you with the, the same color jersey you have on. And, you know, we've always been one of those programs that we need to get our energy, our juice, and, and from, from within ourselves and not from external places. Obviously, I think there's something to be said about coming out and playing in front of a hometown crowd and, and that element. And I hate it for our fans and for our fan base and community that they're not allowed in uh, to Maryland Stadium just yet. But there's a responsibility when you play here uh, for the name on the front of the jersey that anytime you step inside Maryland Stadium, that you do it with the right kind of uh, mentality, the right kind of attitude, and you play to the standard that, that has been set. And to me, those are the things that we want to put our energy and efforts into, uh, understanding the standard and how we need to play, and especially when we play here at home in Maryland Stadium.